What are we talking about today? Three forms of power. That's what we are talking about today. Three forms of power. Amen. This is going to be so powerful that your life will never be the same again. Brothers and sisters, we are in the days of power. Amen. Therefore, your inability to subscribe to power will cause you to give up your destiny easily. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter what you feel about yourself. Amen. It does not matter what you desire. If there is no power, there won't be manifestations. It is my prayer that all believers should come to an understanding. And that understanding is that it all comes down to power. The gospel is not the gospel without power. It took power for you to be saved. It will take power for you to stay saved. Amen. Paul says something in the book of Romans chapter 1 verses 16. When he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power. Meaning the gospel is power. Jesus did not come and begin to preach because he was Jesus. In Luke 4, 18, he says, the spirit of God is upon me. He was actually saying the power of God is upon me. Meaning even to preach, it takes power. I wish believers really knew what they need. Many a time, what we say we need is not what we really need. In a world where many are fast becoming a prey to the wiles of the enemy, power is therefore a necessity. In this kingdom, you can't survive without power. With power, you don't need, you don't have to explain yourself because you only have to manifest it. The reason why I'm preaching this message today, I'm trying to say to you, enough of storytelling. Enough of logical analysis. Excuses and philosophies. The enemy only submits to power. There is a reason why Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and you read verses 20 said what he said. He said, for the kingdom of God is not in words, but in the demonstration of power. The gospel is power. The kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. Let's talk more power. Let's yada yada more power, power. I've realized that there are Christians who are good talkers, but they can't manifest power. They talk, but they can't back up their talk. They talk, but can't walk the talk. Because for you to walk the talk, it will take power. I wish I could talk to somebody. One will ask and say, Apostle, I hear you are preaching, but why do we need power? It takes power to manifest your vision. It takes power to manifest your dream. It takes power to, mat to materialize or to bring into reality your goals. It will make sense in a while. You can't manifest yourself 
You yourself can manifest to yourself without power. This is too deep, man. That's why you have people who know, who feel it, that you know what, this is my time. But at the end of the day, nothing happens because it will take power to manifest that which is unborn to time. You can plan, but without power, those plans will remain plans. Secondly, so the first one I said, it takes power to manifest your dreams, your visions, or your goals. Mm -hmm. Secondly, power is needed to clear every opposition on your path. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you are a child of destiny, you will face opposition. Mm -hmm. You know what Paul said in the Bible? He said, a great and effectual door has been opened for me, but there are many adversaries. Mm -hmm. Notice if you may, he did not say there is a great door ahead of me. He said a great and effectual door has been opened. He's talking about a door that is already opened for him. But guess what? There are many adversaries. That tells you and I that demons don't gather around closed doors. The enemy contending with you has their own power. Whatever is fighting you at this point in time in your life has its own power. So you cannot conquer them unless or until you plug in to greater power. You need power to initiate motion. Without the power of God at work in your life, you cannot make significant progress no matter who you, no matter who you are. You can never make progress in life and in destiny if there is no power. Say with me, power. power. What I'm about to say will cause other people to leave this broadcast. But I pray you remain. Amen. Stagnation is a result of powerlessness. I will say that again. If you are still here, you are powerful, you have faith. I salute you, I honor you. If you are still here, you are a true believer in Christ. Stagnation is a result of powerlessness. Lastly, okay, last but not least, <laughs> you need power to initiate action. Glory be to God. Amen. There are three triggers for power. Three things that triggers power. Number one, knowledge. That's why you find people saying what? Knowledge is power. You have heard people say that, right? Because they have realized that knowledge can trigger power. My people die because they lack knowledge. Not that they don't have faith, they have faith. Number two, it takes impartation for one to receive power. To have power. Power can be transferred. That's why we are saying, or we always say, oh, let me not say we. I always say, an anointing that is not transferable is questionable. Power is transferable. There are people in the Bible who never had it by themselves. But somebody transferred it from them to the other person. Number three. It takes sacrifice to trigger power. Where they sacrifice, there is power. You can't bypass sacrifice and go to power. Because sacrifice is the highway to power. The quickest way for one, for a person... Or anybody to receive power is when one understands the mystery and the law of sacrifice. It was after Jesus became a sacrifice that he said a big statement in Matthew 28 verse 18. He said, all power has been given unto me. But before the cross, he never said such a statement. So it took him to sacrifice his own life to receive all power. Power. 
power is the end product of sacrifice. When you enjoy or you endorse power, you become a problem solver. <laughs> you can't move in power and remain the same. <laughs> no, 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 no. Once you endorse power, you automatically become a problem solver. Because problems submits only to power. <laughs> it's better to be dead than to be alive without power. Sacrifice releases power for generational blessings. I'm teaching you mysteries. But I'm talking like this so that you write. So that when I take off, it's easy for you to follow me. But I'm still trying to answer you. Why do I need power? Power that comes through sacrifice is a generational armor. That breaks every curse into pieces. Where sacrifice stops, that's where power stops. <laughs> A sacrifice is in the pain, the value, and volume. You cannot sacrifice and not feel it. It's impossible. <laughs> if you can't feel it, you're not sacrificing. <laughs> You can't sacrifice and not feel it. Say, so, Apostle, talk to me. Ah, the people are not here. Ah, the people are not here. I think I will talk to myself. Ah. Say, Apostle, talk to me. Brothers and sisters, never be deceived. It comes down to power. Satan does not understand the language of diplomacy. He understands power. He does not understand emotions. He does not submit. He does not bow. He does not back up because one is emotional. You see, Satan is so ruthless and heartless. Let me put it in a way that I usually put it. He's so merciless that he can finish somebody's life, mess them up until there is nothing left. But Satan won't leave that person. He does not say, now I've dealt with this person is enough. Let me go find somebody. No. He will deal with that person. That when that person dies, Satan will go to whoever is connected to that person. This is what we call generational giants. But generational giants don't submit to anybody because they are emotional. Because they have had enough. Generational giants submit to power. It takes power for you to fulfill destiny. Destinies are hijacked by powers. It will take power to claim back your destiny. You know, Jesus himself called Satan a powerful man in Matthew 12, 28 and 29. He called him a strong man. He said, how can one enter into a powerful man, into a strong man's house, except he first bind the strong man? Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Say three forms of power. Three forms of power. Brothers and sisters, the first form of power that I want to talk to you about, I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say now because I know that some of you are my mentees and you know, you know too much. So um, I want you to understand that I'm not talking about the types of power. I'm talking about the forms of power. Because after all, 
the types of power that we know of are subject to these three forms of power. So they all subscribe and submit to what I'm about to teach you. So this is not your iskus. No. This is not your exosia. No. This is not your kretas. No. This is not your dunamis, functional power. No. This is not your anakazo, compelling power. No. It's not even exusia, positional power. No. Not even kretas, demonstrated power. No. Not even iskus, uh, physical power. No. So we know that. We have taught on that. But this has nothing to do with that. What I'm talking to you about is forms of power. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Some people, they look shocked when we talked about the five types of power. You can't be a believer and walk in power and you don't know the five types of power that are in the Bible. You are in trouble. If you think power in the Bible, all power that is written in the Bible is one power, I don't know what will become of you. You need to immediately, prayfully consider to join our church. Yes, I, I, I'm saying that with humility and humbleness. Amen. Somebody is not raising you for God. Somebody is raising you just to have members. But the knowledge of Jesus and the knowledge of scriptures is not in you. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you have been born again for at least three years upwards, no, 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 no. Something is not right. Remember what Paul said. He said, when I came back, I thought by now you'll be taking on what? Solid food. But he says, ah, I'm shocked that you're still on milk. And he then explains what the milk is. He talks about the basic principles of salvation. Meaning you can't be saved for three years and all you need is to hear salvation, salvation, salvation. You're still on milk. It doesn't make you a holy Christian or a meek Christian. It actually makes you an ignorant Christian, an apio, a baby, somebody who takes on milk. So there is solid food, then there is what we call bones, which is meat. After three years, of course, when it comes to, time, to the things of God, one can be born again now, and in three months, they are matured. And one who was born again for 50 years, they're still a baby. And what causes growth in the spirit, it is not age, but moments, revelation, knowledge. It's what causes growth. Spiritual growth does not come because you pray for it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like somebody, what are you praying for this season, spiritual growth? Stop praying for spiritual growth. You can't pray for spiritual growth. It's like going to the gym and you look at the uh, lifts and you start saying, I'm fit, I'm fit. No, 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 no. no. Stop talking, lift. So when it comes to spiritual growth, you don't go and say, I'm growing spiritually. I'm growing. <laughs> Satan will remember us cut you. So the first form of power is what we call power to become. Write it down. Power to become. Read for me the book of John chapter 1 verses 12. The book of John chapter 1 verse 12. That's correct. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The Bible says in John chapter 1, you read verses 12. We can start it from verse 11. It says, he came to his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. Notice if you may. It is he gave them power to become sons of God. Scripture does not say as many as received him became sons of God. It does not say as many as received him are sons of God. But it says as many as received him to them he gave power to become. So between them and becoming there is power. I will say that again. Amen. Between them and becoming, there is power in the middle. Amen. So you remove the power 
you remove the ability for them to become. So if you want to stop them from becoming, remove power. But if you want them to become, introduce them to power. So it means it takes power for somebody to become. One of the reasons why people have all these dreams but never walk in that reality that they have in their spirit is because there is what we call or rather there is a form of power that is missing and that power is called power to become. Until you have, until you receive power to become, you will never become. Some people are not, not because, do you guys got, uh, got what I said there? Some people are not, right? Whatever they want to be, they are not. Not because they lack resources. Some people are not, not because of there is no money. So some of you, it's not the absence of resources that is causing you to be not. But it is the absence of power. Let me put it in a way that you'll understand. It is not the absence of resources that is causing you not to become. So it is not the absence of money that is stopping you from becoming. But it is the absence of power. Mm, I wish I could say it in a way that... Uh, life is about power. <laughs> Let me say something and I come back. It will sound as if I'm everywhere, but I'm talking about power anyway. You can't finish. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is talking about power. So there's so much to say about power, right? But I don't want you to miss me. When you read the Bible in the book of 2 Timothy, I believe it's chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible declares, For God has not given you the spirit of fear. But it says, He has given you power. He has given you what? Power, which is the spirit of power. He has given you the spirit of love and of what? Of sound mind. Watch this now. You see, there are certain things in life that they don't just need love and sound mind. They will need power. Okay, you missed it. The Bible does not say, for God has not given you the spirit of fear but he has given you the spirit of love and sound mind. Meaning fear is so dangerous that it takes three entities to contend against it. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Mm. So God himself had to, has to go as far as giving us power. Not just sound mind. Somebody all power. power. You see, some people don't understand what Apostle is saying. It takes power for you to fathom the blessings that God has given you. Remember, the Bible says we have been blessed with all kinds of what? Spiritual blessings. With all kinds of blessings in heavenly places. Do you know that the Bible says he did it according to his divine power, by his divine power, to give us all blessings that pertains to life? Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3. Please read it. According as his divine power. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go. Have given unto us all things. All things. But how did he give us all things? According to his divine power. He gave us all things, but power had to be included. It took power for God to give us all things that pertains to life. Please finish it. That pertain unto life and godliness. Mm. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us As into glory. To glory and virtue. My God. My God. So if it would take power for God to release that which belongs to you, it will take power for you to fathom it. Oh my God. So you need power to become. Because in order for you to become, this is powerful what I'm about to say, in order for you to become, you have to and become something. If one becomes wealthy, becomes rich, they have and become poverty. 
And to unbecome something, it takes power. <laughs> One of the greatest challenges that I've seen Christians encounter is them not being able to unbecome something. They will tell you, I love God with all my heart, but this area of my life. And that is because they can unbecome it. I don't know if you are getting it, you, you my people. It takes power to unbecome something. And it takes power to become something. It takes power to unbecome singlehood. And it takes power to become married. Somebody say power. power. I've seen people saying, and I've heard people say, Apostle, I have a multi-million, multi-million, so to say, uh, some billions idea Apostle, this idea that I have is not just thousands and hundreds. This is millions that we are talking about, Apostle. I'll be listening. And Apostle, once I get it right, it's game over. I'll be like, eh? So Apostle, once I get it right, it's game over. Game over for who? The devil and his army. I'm like, wow. So what is the problem, Sir Apostle? I don't know. I have so many people promising to fund this idea, to fund this, to do this, to do that. But guess what? It does not happen. Not because they themselves don't want it to happen. It does not happen because there is no power to become. Say with me, power to become. Power to become. I don't know if I froze here on Zoom or I'm still I'm still moving. Am I still okay? Power to become. Power to become. X one and eight declares. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Pay attention to what the Bible is saying. It says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be. Meaning, before power, they were not. It took power for them to become witnesses. So even in the kingdom of God, you can't witness because you have a desire. Mm -hmm. You can't witness because you have a zeal or a zeal. Mm -hmm. You have a burning. No, you don't witness because you have a burning. You witness because of power. Mm -hmm. And these were men who walked with Jesus. But it took power for them to become witnesses. It comes down to power. If you want to become something, go for power. The Bible declares in the book of Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, it is the Lord God who gives you power to generate wealth. Meaning to be wealthy, to become a wealthy person, it takes power. Come on, church. I'm not saying things that are in my mind. I'm giving you scriptures. And this is what Christians hear. It enters through this ear and it comes out with the other ear. And it is dangerous because if you keep hearing it, God is talking to you. Somebody say power. power. That's why it is said that when two powers meet, less power has to bow. Because it comes down to power. Believe you me, you have power. Even though you are struggling, you have power. But the power you have cannot stand against the power that is against your destiny. 
The one that is actually structuring your life is greater than the one that you have. That's why I'm always saying to you, without power, you can never make an impact. Power is not powder, brothers and sisters. Sometimes it is not that God cannot hear your prayers. You are a powerless believer. I'm not moved by what a man of God drives. I bless God for blessing them. But that does not move me. I don't want to sound like a jealous man of God. I'm not moved by what the, by the kind of a house a man of God has. I'm not moved by how much a man of God has. How much a man of God is worth. I'm moved by the power a man of God carries. If you have a nice house and you can't heal the sick, I'm not impressed. If you have a nice car and you can't deliver the oppressed, I'm not impressed. I, uh, I know I just offended pastors here. I will continue anyway. I remember years ago, I preached in a crusade. I think it was 2012, December. We finished preaching and we, we went to spare. <laughs> we preached for this man of God. We went out for, for lunch after preaching. He took us out. And there was another man of God that had that I had went to preach in that uh, location. So he came. He was not in the service. He came and he actually met us at this restaurant that I'm talking about. And so he was being told what had happened. He was told that, ah, the prophetic was on another level. He was told that the man of God called the sick. And he put them there and he said, by his shadow they will be healed. As he moved, he touched their shadow, his, his shadow touched them. They were, they were healed. People started standing up on wheelchairs. He came to me when he heard that. He came to me and he said to me, it must be nice to be you. I said, what do you mean? Are we together? Amen. He then says to me, how much did you make? I'm telling you, 2012. And it was my first time to hear such a statement. I did not know, and I didn't know that it existed in the body of Christ. I said to him, how dare you ask me how much I made? Why not ask me how many people got saved? Why not ask me how many people got healed? Why are you not asking me how many people got delivered? How dare you look straight into my eyes and ask me how much did I make? It's preachers like you that God is going to kill you on the pulpit. It's preachers like you that God is going to deal with. And when he heard me say such a statement, he was embarrassed. I then realized from there that there are preachers who don't really care about the destinies of people. That's why to them building capacity is useless. All they have to do is to come and motivate people. They will give them what they want to hear, but there won't be power. Because you can't meet such and see power at the end of the day. Because power is heavy. It doesn't go to fools. They can't pick it up. Are we together? And God cannot use a man and he does not know he's using a man. There is no mistake in being used by God. It's not like you move and God is using you and God is not aware that he's using you. The devil is a liar. You can't move in power by mistake. <laughs> Unless it's not God's power. You can move in another power. But in God's power, there are no mistakes. You have to be able to build it up. 
like a battery being recharged. And in, uh, in 2013, we are in uh, 2014, Reverend. We are in Malamlele Limpombo. We have a crusade there for five days. Everybody's fighting me. I've been fought all my life. So if you, if you come now, you came late. Yeah, no, you came late. Everybody's fighting me. I've not, I've not yet arrived. In radio stations, they are talking already that people must not come to the crusade because I'm using powers that are not from God. <laughs> That's what they were saying. We got there the first day. We had like maybe 18 people in a very big hall. And it doesn't bother me. I'm not moved by numbers. <laughs> it doesn't disturb me at all. I got in there. We began to move, to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. In my language, I would say, Ashika Luanga Those are tongues. Meaning God came down. <laughs> the one who's unseen came down. That's what it means. Ashika Luanga The one who's unseen came down. God came down. The prophetic was on another level. Deliverance was on another level. Healing was on another level. We did not evangelize the second day. We were in prayer. The reverend was with us. Amen. The first day, we went to a crusade, not knowing where we are going to sleep. <laughs> so after the crusade, after the service, a man, a man just came, who actually heard people scream, and he entered with his car, he came in the service. So when he saw what the Lord had done, he called one of our guys, and he says, I don't know, but I have a house, I want to accommodate the servants of God. That man took us to his house. But another house, he had another house. I don't know if Rev remember, we were in this other house. We were there all of us. And he had another house. Like Paul who would say, and they took care of us. So they took care of us. The second day, we did not have time to go and evangelize and tell people that there is crusade. We were praying. The second day at night, there was no space inside and outside. Why? Because when people are healed, people can keep quiet. <laughs> when people have seen God, that's what the Bible says, and the woman with the issue of blood, she heard. But she did not just hear because Jesus was moving around saying, I'm the son of God. Jesus was demonstrating power. <laughs> and after that crusade, we saw the power of God. And one preacher asked me, and he said, you should be satisfied to see God work like this through you. I said, I'm not satisfied. I'm sanctified, but never satisfied. How can I be satisfied, yet there are people who are still hating? How can I be satisfied, yet there are people who are still not saved? How can I be satisfied, yet there are people who are still on drugs? How can I be satisfied, yet our nation is going down because of crime? And I have an answer, and the answer is that the word of God can change your life, can transform your life. I can't be satisfied. Glory be to God. All I'm trying to say to you is, it does not matter who talks to you, how they say it. If there is no power, run for your life. Listen, what I'm about to say will help those who are saying, ah, do you mean power, power, power? Watch this. God cannot be in a place and you don't see his power. Where God is, there is power. God cannot be in a place and you don't see his manifestations. But the fact that you see power, it does not always mean God is there. I'm sure they didn't get it. Uh, no, 98% of them got it. Let's help those that are coming for the first time. God cannot be in a place and you don't see power. And you don't see his manifestations. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there is power, it does not mean God is there. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't always mean God is there. Mm -hmm. So you can see power yet God is not even there. Mm -hmm. But God cannot be in a place and you don't see power. Mm -hmm. That's why the spirit of discernment is important. Mm -hmm. To know which power is this. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. 
wherever you are, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray for you. Receive power to become. Because it will take power to fulfill destiny. Oh, the way you are receiving, church, uh, you are saying to me, Apostle, uh, we are tired already. That's what, that's what you are saying to me. Some of you right now, you wanted to start a business. You wanted to be a CEO. You wanted to be self-employed. You wanted to answer to yourself. You wanted to start something from the beginning of this year. Some of you, you wanted to move from that location that you are in right now to another location so that you can start another journey in your life that you believe by the Spirit of God will actually answer many things in your life. But up to date, you are still hovering around like the Holy Ghost. You are just hovering in one place. Remember the Bible says the Spirit of God was hovering upon the waters. Right? At least the Holy Ghost was waiting for a word. And when God said, let there be, then the Holy Ghost created, changed that word into a reality. You, you are just everywhere. Dangling around, taking take everywhere. With no progress. Today I come. And I came. And I'm here. As an apostle. To declare over your life. Those days of you crying and weeping are over. Those days of you being directionless are over. Those days of you moving but not going anywhere are over. Receive power to become. Power to become that which God has called you to become. Power to become that which God has destined you to become. I declare there is no witch. There is no hater. There is no man on earth. There is no woman on earth that shall stop you after receiving this power. No man shall stop you from becoming. In the name of Jesus, no demon from hell shall stop you from becoming. If you wanted to be a real estate investor this year, it shall happen. If you wanted to start an online shop, it will happen. If you wanted to get a promotion this year, it shall happen. Receive power to become. Receive power to become. I said receive power to become. Do you know that there are people who become millionaires not because they are wise, not because they are more brilliant, not because they are more talented. It's because they received power to become. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. I've seen people with all the talent in the world. But with no results. And as I investigated why. I realized this power, they, are, they don't have power to become. That's why there are people who can sing better than those that we know. But these ones are not known. Nobody knows them. Only their family members. Even their family members don't believe in them. Why? They lack power to become. The second form of power. This one is the most dangerous one. It's what we call power against. Read Matthew 10 verse 1. The second form of power, I'm about to close. It's called what? Power against. Say with me, power against. Power One more time, say power against. Power against. Read for us. The book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Yes, ma'am. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, uh -huh. he gave them power against unclean spirits uh -huh. to cast them out. Now, please be seated. Watch this. In Matthew 6, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Mm -hmm. It was as if prayer was not enough. I don't know if you guys are getting apostles. I did not expect Jesus to give his disciples power, especially after he taught them how to pray. And he gave them power against. Meaning power was here and they were here. They were praying, but they never had power against. I will say that again. They were disciples of Jesus 
Where he slept, they slept. They will eat and see Jesus eat there. But they never had power against. And they did not know they did not have power against. Until Jesus called them and said, come and receive power against. And it was after they received power against that they began to move in power against. Meaning all along, they never had power against, though they were in prayer. Though they knew how to pray, but they never had power against. I've seen believers who can pray, but they don't have power against. I remember years ago something happened. And I told you guys before about this one. I was in church. I grew up in church. I joined by then. The group was called Prayer Warriors. Intercession, intercessors. So we used to do intercession. But we used to call ourselves prayer warriors. We even had a group called prayer. Our prayer ministry. Our prayer ministry. <laughs> I'm telling you. Those days. Ah, Tibuya. Big fewer. Big color in those days. It was too much. It was fire for fire. And what happened was one time. There was this man of God that we used to move with. He was way older than us. He was more of a leader. More of a mentor to us. We looked up to this man. This man moved in power. This man is the man that really taught us the art of spiritual warfare. And he launched us in prayer. That guy could come like this. And announce seven days fasting. And after seven days, we say, thank you, Jesus. Now we are breaking. He then says, we are breaking. Tomorrow we are starting another one. And back then, there was this guy who used to mama. That guy used to mama a lot. And thank God I distanced myself from him. Because ah, if I listen to him, be careful of people who mama. I repeat that. Be careful of people who mama. People who complain. That guy used to mama a lot. One time, we are in a, a church called Trinity. It was a night prayer. This man of God is moving. We used to move with him. We were like working together, but we were looking up to him. Then there is a lot of things happening. He's casting out demons. Because it's a lot of things happening. Then he calls us. Why? Because we're 18. He then says to me, at that time I was not even called apostle. I didn't even know I was apostle. That time a lot of people used to call me prophet. Thank God I never called myself prophet. And that is because of the gift of prophecy. If you find me prophesying, you'll conclude he's a prophet. So people called me prophet. Others men of God. But I, at that time, I preferred people call me Brother Mzwake. And others, they used to call me Brother. Right. So, he then calls me and says, Brother Mzwake, come. Pray for these people here. I'm praying. Demons are manifesting. I'm there. Pray. Demons are coming. Out. We, are, we are casting out devils. Not interviewing devils. Casting out devils. Then he calls this guy. Oh God, I nearly said his name on live broadcast. Watched by thousands. People were going to Google him and search him. Thank God I didn't say his name. We used to laugh whenever we bring this up. We used to actually talk about it in front of him. So they called him. He was at the back. He was praying though. But this guy used to mama a lot. The man of God that was leading us, he said, eh, pray for that lady there. When he was, that, that, demon was that, that demon was manifesting. So that lady's body was moving, 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 moving. But when he came, it was as if something happened. The lady stopped manifesting. He said, you, if you come closer to me, I will beat you. When the man of God went closer, the demon starts screaming. Yeah! When he came closer, the demon says, you, I will deal with you. Uh, I remember, I would never forget, we're in a church called Trinity. It was around 2 a.m. We were in a night, all night prayer. 
My man, because everybody could see what was happening, he went closer. You see, when the Bible says, and the sons of Sceva were beaten by demon, by a demon-possessed man, the Bible is not joking. Some of us, we have seen it. Not because it happened to us. It happened to those that were around us. Are we together? <laughs> he came closer like this. Ah, brothers and sisters. That demon did not waste time. Gave him fivefold ministry. One, I thought maybe something will happen. Ah, the man of God who left running for his life. And that man of God that he used to mentor us, he pointed another short guy. There was, a, there was another short man of God that we used to move with. He just pointed that guy. He called him and said, deal with this demon. When that guy came, that demon was standing like this. Ah, the guy was just pointing like this. Ah, the woman fell down. Power. I, I, you see, here you have power against. I don't know if people are getting what I'm saying here. It's not that you don't pray. You don't have power against. They said, come out in the name of Jesus. Whom Paul preaches, said, no problem. Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? Because we can't sense power against. And we manifested because you called Jesus. Not because you have power. And we are going to show you that we don't have power. The Bible says the demon-possessed men beat the sons of Sceva. Imagine, embarrass the name of the father. Sceva was a priest. That they came out bleeding. Say power against. No matter how loud you are in your prayers. No matter how loud you are in your prayers. If you have no power against. That which you are praying against will prevail against your life. You will be saying I'm stopping this. And it will happen exactly as you are praying. And that is because you don't have power against. Receive power against. I said receive power against sicknesses. Receive power against delay. Receive power against stagnation. Receive power against poverty. Receive power against lack. Receive power against lack of vision. Say with me power against. When you begin to move in power against, even in your dreams, the devil does not turn you into a playground. That's why some of us, we cannot be pulled by demons at night. It shocks me when you hear a true believer in Christ who has been saved and sitting under my teachings that God has bestowed and put in my spirit. Saying I've been, I was pulled at night. Well, I've not heard that in a long time, but yeah. It would shock me if I was to hear it. Pulled how? What time? Where? How did the devil get the chance to pull you? Where exactly? You know, there are people who are being pulled at night. Seriously, pulled, left, right, center. They go to sleep fresh. They wake up tired. What were you doing? I feel like I was waking. Waking where? We are resting. You, you are waking at night. Your body is in pain. You were fine before you switched off and closed your eyes. When people wake, wake up refreshed, you, you wake up to feel like you want to sleep again. Why? Because at night you're being pulled. Strangled. No, the devil is alive. There are certain things they must never happen to a believer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the reason being is because First John 4, 17 declares, as he is, so am I. If they can't do that to Jesus, why would they do that to you? Meaning there is something missing. And in most cases, it's power against. Once you have power against the spirit of delay, even where people are delayed, when you come in, people stop being delayed. It is not just you. But when you come in, even the people in there, delay is broken. Last but not least, this form of power, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you can't make it without it. Power over. 
Remember, the first one is power to become. The second one is power against. And the th third one is power over. When you read the Bible, brothers and sisters, in the book of Luke, chapter 10, I believe is verse 19. The Bible says, Jesus has given us power. In fact, just behold, I've given you power. Not just to train, but listen to this. He has given us authority, power over what? Snakes and scorpions. Mm -hmm. Say, so I receive power over. I receive power over. One of the reasons why people struggle with generational curses is because they don't have power over. <laughs> uh, the Bible says a curse without a cause cannot stand. So you need power over that which has caused the curse to stand. You just need power over. No prophet can move in the prophetic without power over. Because in the prophetic, there are many voices. Even Paul himself said it. He said there are many voices. As much as you are speaking on behalf of God, the devil wants to manipulate your spirit. Are we together? You need power over. Say, I receive power over. I receive power over. May you receive power over all over you. I it takes power over to pick up the plans of somebody who has evil intentions. Coming in the name of a friend, but their intentions are evil. It will take power over their intentions. You know when you move in power over, you see people for who they are, really are. Amen. Say power over. Power over. When somebody moves with power over, they become dangerous. Amen. These people with power over, you fire them now. They start their own business. They will be hiring your own employees. Power over. No, 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 no. You don't. Do. They bounce back. Amen. And they bounce back like they never left. Yeah. Power over. People with power over, they don't get easily offended. Mm -hmm. I just told you a secret today. That you can't move in power over and you are easily offended. <laughs> you can't be angry and be focused at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. So people with power over are very focused people. That's why you will close here and will appear here. You say, but I closed here. How come this person is still appearing here? It's because they have power over. So it does not matter what you do. They have power over it. It does not matter what you plan. They have power over it. So it is not them. It's the power in them. It takes power for you to be what God wants you to be. It takes power for you to be against that which is against you. It takes power for you to conquer, to overthrow whatever that is coming against you. Amen. Brothers, somebody say power. power. The Bible says, uh, I need to look for this scripture. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Let's hear what your Bible says. That I may know him uh -huh. and the power of his resurrection. Uh -uh. So for resurrection to happen, it took power. So resurrection did not happen because Jesus was the son of God. You guys are missing it. It took power over death. Because whoever death holds, death does not let go. But Jesus had power over death. He says, all I want to know. Read it in King James. Let's hear what King James says. That I may know him. He says that I may know him who Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. And the power of his resurrection. And the power. Meaning resurrection was accompanied by power. Resurrection did not just happen. There was power involved. And to show you that there was power involved. When Mary Magdalene. Right. And the other women. Went to the tomb. They said, who shall roll the stone for us? 
Are we together? And the Bible says, and when they got to the tomb, they realized that the stone has been rolled. One angel was sitting on top of the stone and another angel was with Jesus in the garden. Meaning, when Jesus resurrected, angels were just on, on duty that day, waiting. Because they heard on the third day he's coming back. And the, the moment they got a signal, they rolled the stone. And the master of creation came out. It took power. Power over. No human assisted there. When it comes to resurrection, ah, oh, come on now. Come on now. Even the lady from Magdala, she didn't do anything. Mary Magdalene. I was telling another man of God that I don't know what we're dealing with. Oh, we're dealing with a partnership. Something that has to do with partnership. And I was just telling him how widows actually took care of the ministry of Jesus. And we ended up talking about even people that did Jesus delivered. We, 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 we ended up talking about Mary Magdalene. And he was very shocked when I told him um, that Magdalene was not his son. Name. <laughs> he was very shocked. And he's a great man of God. I was like, oh my God. Sometimes. Um, Magdalene was not his son. Name. No, 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 no. It was a place where she came from. Amen. So because there was Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Bible had to put a thin line between Mary, the mother of Jesus, and this lady that Jesus had delivered. Mm -hmm. So they attached where she came from or where she was coming from mm -hmm. to her name because she was from Magdala. Mm -hmm. Then they said Mary Magdalene, oh, yes. meaning Mary from Magdala. Mm -hmm. Even Judas Iscariot, Iscariot was not his surname. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but remember there was Jude, the brother of Jesus amongst the disciples. So Judah, the Jude, the brother of Jesus, and Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Jude, uh, of Jude, right? And now we have Judas. Do you know Judas goes back to Judah? Yes. Hence they had to say Ascariot. And what was happening in Ascariot? There were money changers. People who dealt with money. These guys, they knew how to spin money. That's why Jesus, when he met Judas, he said, you take care of my money. He had capacity. But at the very same time, that was a catalyst to that which the prophets had spoken about. Yes. Am I still with you or I'm on my own? Yes. Let me see you wave your hands. Say, I receive power over. I receive power over. It comes back to power. Do you know that God cannot do anything in your life unless there is power? Okay. Okay. That's too deep, but write it down. It's okay. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. God can never do anything unless there is power. You see, God is a God of power. And he moves because of power. If there is no power in you, you are not only limiting yourself. You are limiting what God wants to do in you, through you, by you, for you. Ephesians 3.20. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. That, what does it say? Now unto him uh -huh. that is able to do exceeding. Unto him who God. Who Christ. Unto him our God. Right? Unto him, meaning he's able. Uh -huh. Exceeding abundantly. Study it afresh. Does it say capable or able? Uh, it read it again. Able. Just read it again. Yes, <laughs> read it. Of course, it doesn't say capable. I'm just trying to help somebody. Amen. Uh -huh. Read it again. 3, verse 20. Yes. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Not capable, but able Amen. to do exceedingly. Uh -huh. Abundantly. Uh -huh. Is Ab it exceeding, right? Yes, Apostle. Exceeding Indeed. abundantly. Yes, uh -huh. Apostle. Above all that we ask or think. Above all that we ask or think. So, you ask this, he's able to do that. You ask that or think of that, he's able to do that. Right? Continue. According to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that worketh in us. Meaning the amount of power that works in me is what stops God. Is what limits God. 
The amount of power that is in me, that works in me, gives God capacity to say, work on this, work by this, work with this capacity. So if God wants to answer your prayer, it's not that he's not able to do exceeding abundantly, but he will check the power that worketh in you. Say power. power. Say power. power. Witches don't, don't, don't submit because you are loud at night. They will wait for you to finish praying and go to sleep. They will deal with you. Somebody with power can sleep without even screaming. And nothing will happen to them. That is power over. Say, I receive power over. over. One more time, say, I receive power over. over. When it comes to the things of God, power settles the matter. Do you know that Satan could not stop Job until he had power over? Satan was, God gave him power over. <laughs> Job 1, Job 1, uh, Job 1, 12, quickly. Job 1, 12. It has to be fast. My last scripture. And when we talk about power, we are not talking about your own power. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might, nor by power. Not your own power. Uh huh. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 12. What does it say? And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. Behold, mm -hmm. all that he hath is in thy power. All that he has is in your power. Why? Because Satan could not stop Job. He had to have power over Job mm -hmm. to stop Job. Mm -hmm. And God gave him the power. Come on now. And that is because Job himself had power over. So it took power over for Satan to have power over Job. I pray for you wherever you are today. By the spirit of grace. That you shall receive power over. Power against. And power to become. What others failed to do you shall do this year. That is so. 2023 will not be another failed year for you. That is so. I refuse on your behalf. That is so. I declare and I decree that this is your year of flourishing. That is so. I declare you are on top of the mountain and you are not coming down. That is so. I declare and I decree you are making progress. That is so. I declare you are protected from the wickedness of men. That is so. I declare promotion increase is yours. That is so. I declare that you are blessed going in, you are blessed going out. That is so. You are blessed in the city, you are blessed in the field. That is so. I declare that the glory of God is upon your life. That is so. I declare that God shall turn you into a great testimony of his glory. That is so. that people shall look at you and say this is the finger of God is so. this is the hand of God is so. this is the power of God that so. when people look at you they will want to glorify Jesus is so. just as they said let the God of Daniel be worshipped they shall say let your God be worshipped so. and that is my prayer for you so. receive power 